The Roberto de Zerbi recreation has started pretty good. Hello and welcome back everybody to our series here with Venezia doing a Roberto de Zerbi recreation. I am looking forward to seeing how today goes. There's been quite a few good results off of camera, which I'm going to show to you here in a second. Uh, yeah, just going back through some of the things in, in episode one. Like as I said, this is us recreating the philosophy first. The game model is going to come second. I've actually just spent a bit of time looking at some more of uh, Brighton's matches in closer detail. And today, in today's episode, we're going to focus on trying to recreate the build-up. So one thing I noticed in my tactic in watching the matches that with this one, while we were playing, that uh, I think one big difference between like the Zerbi and Pep, for example, when people look, people look at them, I think from afar and think that they're both the same style of, of play, uh, Brighton are very, very, very patient at playing out from the back. They will let teams come onto them and press them and play around their press really, really well to a level that is on par with anybody in the world, including, I would say, City. But once they beat that first line of press, they are much more willing to execute their attacks quickly and break forwards. They're not looking to just control the game the way that maybe Pep would in trying to build up possession, control the game, control the transitions. They're happy to just go for, for the gaps uh, where they appear and with the weaknesses in the team structures. That's what they just exploit and they're ruthless in that. So we need to try and sort of create like a hybrid there where we're going to be really patient playing from the back, but then we're going to execute our attacks very quickly. So we need to try and come up with a good hybrid system for that. The other thing that I noticed was yet again in other games that a lot of the Zerbi's teams do tend to have, even if they have two pivots, one of them will like to drop between the centre backs. That's something quite common. So we need to come up with a system where that's going to work. I'm going to go through in the game of how that might happen because like I mentioned previously, when people hear that and they hear defender dropping into the defensive line in FM, you think, great, halfback, go on Jack, put the halfback in. There's no problem. Play a 4 2 3 one use a halfback. The problem with using a halfback here is that the halfback will drop in this situation to the side of the back, uh, the back two. So he will drop there and drop to the side of the centre backs. And that isn't really what we want to see because his pivot players don't drop to the side of the centre backs. They normally drop in between them. So how do you recreate that in FM? I mean, deep line playmaker, we will try a deep line playmaker because he will drop and try and get on the ball off the defensive line as well. A bit like the halfback, but not quite in the same, the same way, but he will do that behaviour more than any other role apart from obviously the halfback. Uh, the other solution is, like I said in the first video, we might actually have to play one pivot player because that's the way we can recreate it with the deep line playmaker defend or a halfback, whichever we want to use. That will get that behavior that we're looking for when we readjust this defensive line here in a second. Let me just make it a basic back line here for a second. Yeah, that would get us our recreation of what we want to see, something like this. And this would work either with the deep line playmaker or the halfback. We'll get that behavior. But they definitely do have two players as pivots building up how they attack after that we can look at something different but i'm looking purely really at these zones here i'm looking at the the two two pivot players the back from the goalkeeper and how we build our attacks first that's sort of how i'm looking at it from a game order perspective um so and, and the behaviors of the players so in the games that i've seen this season he has got his full backs quite wide the half back or let's say a pivot player drops in and they end up in a you know five shape a bit like this right ends up a bit like that Forget the forget everybody else. If ignore all these players, it's look at these players. It ends up in this shape uh, quite a bit with the with the players pressed up like that. Now, without speaking to the Zerbi, I don't know if this is something he'd always want to do. I don't know if he put that in his philosophy how he'd always want a pivot player to do that, or if he's doing this purely because he's the bright manager of the players that he's got, and also not being one of the top two or three teams in the league in terms of on paper. I'm not sure exactly which one that would that would be without speaking to him. Uh, there's lots of managers who you see do lots of similar things all the way through their career, and you think that's just how they like to play. And actually, if they were given a different set of tools, they'd actually play quite differently, but they shouldn't have the opportunity. And until you speak to the manager, you don't really know for sure um, for a lot of those cases. So and like I've said before, the Zerbi has used completely different playout shapes with his Brighton teams through his time there so far. And also player profiles play a huge role, right? Like how Tariq Lamptey will play the right back role in his playing out shape. It's completely different to how you would expect the centre back to to be able to execute some of those things right, and the behaviours of those players and the way that they sort of they sort of go. So that's something really to be quite mindful of. Brighton have quite different profiles of players. They've used at wing back. They've used Solly March. They've used Tariq Lamptey. They've used some of their centre backs out there. They've or well, centre backs in terms of player profile is what I'm saying anyway. That's just that's that's how I would 
describe them in FM. It's going to be tough, right? It's going to, it's going to be tough to, to recreate exactly what he's done, at least recently with the shape that I just showed you, because the best way to do it is something like a traditional wing back roll and maybe putting sit narrower so that what you get from that is yes, they'll stay wide in the build up and help create that sort of three and a two shape with the three center backs, two wing backs. We'll get a bit of that shape going, but then as you transition to the further up the pitch, they don't quite go as wide. They do start to go a bit more narrow on the inside. Maybe we do something like that. That is definitely an option. Other alternatives could be inverted wing back with overlap on and trying to keep them wider. Maybe we do a bit of both. We go one, one side, one, the other to try and mix it up a little bit. That is also an alternative option there too. But okay, going back to the original issue of let's just let's just focus first on the pivots. Let's get the pivots right first and ignore everything else. So you should try and break it down. When you're doing your, your coaching courses, uh, you can look at your playing philosophy or game model in multiple different ways. When you're doing training sessions, you look sort of start off with the player that's on the ball, the player that's sort of around the ball, and the players that are away from the ball. And then you start to look at players and units, right? So if we were to do a coaching course and we were doing some sessions on how we're gonna sort of recreate the shape that the Zerbi does and play out from there. We are going to look our unit, let's call it our unit. We're going to be looking purely just at these four players here. We're going to be looking at the two center backs, two CDMs. I want us to be able to be patient, play out from the back. I want us to be able to attack with just one pivot player really holding so that the other pivot player can go and join the attack a bit more. I don't want us to have just two completely sat there out of the attack. And I want us to be able to press. But looking at just purely playing out from the back first, I want us to be able to build the two players that, are, that look like pivots. And I want one of them to be able to drop between the centre-backs when asked to do so or is required, whichever the case may be. In the games that I've watched, uh, Liverpool had quite a narrow um, quite a narrow press, if you want to call it that, or a narrow block anyway. And having two pivots sat where Liverpool's front three were, there was just no space anyway. So it made sense for the CDM to sort of go drop behind Liverpool's front line and get on the board there. So we need to get a partnership that can... Build as a two, but that one of them can drop into the middle. So in this match coming up here against Brescia in a second, when we get round to the match, I'll cover the recent results in a second, by the way. I've just sort of got into the tactics because that's what we're here for. And I fucking love it, man. It's, it's so much it's so much fun here. Yeah, we'll try something like this. We'll try and get a system where maybe the right CDM could be like a deep line playmaker defend. And we'll see how we'll see how he drops. We will analyze together how he drops. We'll put the game in comprehensive. Let's see how he drops in the 4-2-3-1. Does he drop between them? Uh, does he drop to the side of them? Does he drop at all the way that we'd like him to? If the answer is no, we know that, okay, maybe we do need to go back to our single pivot option. But the Mazala isn't dropping as much in the build-up as much as we'd like, although he does help press properly. So what it might be a case of is like a Roman playmaker, somebody that will definitely come and get on the ball in the build-up for us, which is what we want to see. So it will look like a double pivot uh, accommodation at times with these two in these roles here. In fact, from what I've seen, I think something like what we've got here or... A halfback that will look really similar to how Brighton build. I think that will work really well. The downside to that, halfback is going to stay too deep when we start to attack. They're going to stay as part of the back three too long. So that's going to be a huge issue for us where it's not quite as realistic. So hopefully the deep line playmaker gives us what we want in that situation. And then the rooming playmaker won't quite get as forward as much as we were liking before as the way that the Mazala was. So that's going to be a potential issue then in the final third. But we'll get to the final third later. We'll just focus on this one thing because... If just looking at some of the recent games from the Zerbi, this is such a clear part of his current game model with Brighton that I don't think we can call it the Zerbi recreation without getting this behavior from the pivots while they're building up, right? And uh, again, all we're, we're doing all this information, we're looking at all this detail just on really four players, two center backs, two pivots. And the center backs do split really wide. So putting them to set wider, to stay wider, would be a potential option for player instruction in this uh, situation as well. So. That is your sort of information of things that I've noticed in my own tactic. We're, like I said, away from the actual specifics of that, I feel like we're a little bit rushed in how we play. So maybe we need to drop to positive or something like that. But we need to be controlled in playing up for the back, be really good at that, then execute the attacks once we beat the first line of press. One last thing to consider, though, is if we look a little bit too direct, it could be that our players don't quite have the composure and the decisions that are required for the Zerbi level players in FM, right? So it could be that we do look a bit rushed, but that's just how the players are going to play in the match engine, right? Because we're in a we're in a second tier team in Italy. We're not even a top tier team yet, right? So it's also a factor in that is, is would better players be a bit calmer on the ball? I think the answer would be yes. So I'm less less enthusiastic about changing the philosophy, apart from maybe dropping to positive for now. Um, and also because it's worked, like, you know, 
let's face it, facts are facts. Results are results. Five games, five wins. It's, it's a good start. A lot of goals scored. Actually, before we look at this, I have made some transfers. I completely forgot that we have made some transfers since we last met. And some of these could be the difference between us getting promoted and not. Some really good players here. Okay, the first player in is Andrea Papetti. Andrea Papetti is a pretty good centre-back with a bit of pace. Not the best defensively in terms of his tackling and marking, but he's, he's quick. He's good enough on the ball. He's young. He's going to be a good asset going forward. I think he's going to improve quite a bit. And he comes in for £1.5 million. I think a really good player could probably be with us for the next few years, you'd expect. So hopefully he's going to stay with us and be a good player. He could either play as a centre-back for us, or if we do use an inverted fullback type role, he could also play in that as well. And in comes Morgan. Morgan is an absolute legend of the Moneyball series we did with Paris FC on FM23. Morgan was an absolute legend, scored loads and loads of goals for us in the second tier of France and got us promoted essentially on his own. I managed to get him on loan on five grand a week and he's coming. You can see already he scored five goals in three matches. Unfortunately, the good news ends there because he's now injured for well over a month. So gutting. He's the reason we've done so well and scored so many goals. The last game I just played, in fact, was without him because he was injured and we only managed to win 1-0. So it shows just how effective having a player that's just got a little bit of something getting off the mark with pace. And he's been able to really help us out, score some goals. And I think he's going to be in a central striker for the remainder of the season once he's back fit. But Morgan comes in on loan, five grand a week. Pretty good. And lastly, Daniel Alfadli comes in, the pivot player I thought would go to somebody else, incidentally. But he's come to us, and he looks like an unbelievable pivot player. That is what he is. He's going to be a ball-winning pivot player. No flair, not much passing, not much dribbling, not much agility. He's a proper, proper old score for me. Ball-winning midfield player, pivot player that can play centre-back as well if we need to. And he can play full-back if we need him to as well. So does a bit of everything that we need him to do. He looks really, really good. Good work, great, good bravery. I like him quite a bit. I'm just surprised he came to us. I can't remember who it was that was going in for him, but I really thought they'd, he'd go to somewhere else. I, it was a club in a division at least above us, one of the top tiers, I think. So he does come to us, 11 grand a week. He comes in for £700,000 and looks a pretty solid pivot player, starting pivot player, tenacious defensive field player. Love that. He comes in, get a few yellows, maybe a few reds as well when it's required and be the uh, enforcer that we need. So there we go. That is your remaining chance as the players that have come in. Now results. Like I just mentioned, Morgan came in for the game against Pisa. Instantly scored. There he is. Got himself a goal. Mikel got himself a goal as well. And Florent managed to get himself one as well. We didn't manage to dominate the game too much in terms of possession. But I feel like we were always pretty good. And I'm pretty sure their goal was another set-piece goal. So there you are. But 3-1 uh, there. Then we absolutely battered Katanzari. Now, to be fair, this should have been about 7-0. The reason it was even so close was because I took all of the good players off. The players that were playing while well, I took off to sort of give them a rest, play some of the other players that haven't played too much yet to get their match sharpness up. And that made the game a lot closer than it really was. Passing was in our favour, ball shares in our favour, possessions in our favour, everything was in our favour. We absolutely battered them. They were fortunate to get their goals. As you can see, they got their goals right at the end when I'd taken off all our best players, essentially. So really good performance from the boys. Morgan got himself two more goals, which was great to see. And generally a really good performance from the boys. So that was a really good performance and result for us there. There was a 5-0 here in another game as well away from home. This game was quite comprehensive. I don't think they even managed to get too many shots. No, they didn't. In fact, this game is the game where I put on Twitter the goal that we scored was just incredible. Patient build-up play, playing through the lines, uh, execution of the, of the final third passes. It was just perfect. It was a beautiful goal. 5-0 to Venezia and we absolutely battered them, which was pretty good. And that brings us to the game I just played a second ago, actually, off of Canberra here. We won 1-0 without Morgan. It looked pretty mundane. I did start to tweak, though, to be honest with you. I did a few little tweaks of the tactic during this game. So that is also why a couple of things that apply. It's also the game after the international break. So potentially a few factors as to why that game wasn't quite as comprehensive. And that is it. You are bang up to date. And that is your league table going into today. So all things are looking pretty good for us. 17 goals scored, four against, 15 points. Four points clear at the top, five points clear of the two teams outside the top two. So all looking really good from Venezia at this stage. Average possession, we are currently tied in sixth there. Uh, XG created is something I really want to see here. Non-penalty XG, 13.89 by far the most in the league, isn't it? So that's good. That's something I'm going to be very much wary of when we are 
when we're one of the better sides in the league, like a top five, top six, maybe top eight team, this is something I'm going to be very wary of. And I'm very interested in seeing how we do. Maybe OPPDA as well, in which we are 4.78. Okay, so we're still pretty good there as well, which is just pretty good. So that's that's quite good. Not the best, but it's, it's all right. Net transfer spend. We are dead last. We have actually made over £1 million in transfer profit this year. And our team salary is the eighth biggest in the league, which is obviously pretty good for us. £11 million there. It's quite high, though. Uh, apparently, our finances are going to be pretty bad by the end of the season. Yeah, 17 is a pretty big hole to be able to try and fill. I mean, we've not done too much of it. I mean, we've got a 2 million transfer debt, right? So if, if you took the 2 million off of that, it still looks pretty bad. So I don't think we can do too much about that. Of course, the game doesn't know that we're going to absolutely wipe the floor of this division and get promoted yet. So the game doesn't know that yet, but we do. Well, well I, let's wait and see what happens with defensive corners before we get too carried away with that, maybe, because it's been not great. In fact, let's look at that as a stat right now. Okay, this isn't totally correct. A couple of reasons. One is obviously the first game that we showed on camera was a cup game, so they don't count here. Two, certain second phase corners, if they take a certain amount of time um, before the, the shot, goes in it won't count as a corner conceded from corners here and definitely one of the goals that i conceded off camera was definitely it was definitely a second phase corner that should have counted now i don't think it did so we'll keep an eye on this stat as we go through the season because i think this could be quite bad for us but apparently it's only one so far so we'll, we'll see i think stand up players off of camera i would say christopher with his three goals and six assists has been pretty good quite impressed with how he's done for us on the right hand side he's played on the right not the left despite the fact that he's natural on the left and not on the right he's played on the right hand side for us he's looked really really good Florent as well as the number 10. I do feel like that Florent getting injured will be an absolute uh, disaster for us. I don't think there's anybody else in the squad that can really do what he does. I'd say those have been absolutely excellent and really, really effective for us. Generally, the back line's been pretty good, I would say. They looked... I mean, they've conceded a few goals because I was changing players more than anything, right? That's that's why we conceded. Subs, nobody's really been effective off the bench, but most of the time, we're already winning the game, so they're coming on to help, you know, press... Uh, hit teams on counter. We don't need to score a goal often, right? So I, I guess I'm not really going to judge them too much on that just yet. But uh, I would say we're quite a first 11 heavy team. I think we're going to have a bit of a drop off now that Morgan's out at striker. If we lost Florent, like I said, I think we'd have a drop off there too. And then maybe on the wings as well. I think in defense, we could probably get away with losing some players, not because they're not useful or good enough for us, but because the strength and depth is very, very good. I feel like that between Altare here, between Candela, between potentially Michael over here. Between these players, I think we could replace one or two players and get away with it and carry on playing at a similar level. So, yeah, I think we're doing okay right now. I had a quick chat here with Duncan, the chairperson of uh, Venezia. He is disappointed with the first thing he wants us to do. He's very disappointed with the second. He's disappointed with the third thing, and he's devastated by the fourth thing here. But he's pleased, so... He's given us a B minus to summarize the board of pleasing management of the team, but but they are actually really unhappy with this individually about everything, but they're pleased overall because do you know what? Results matter, ladies and gentlemen. Results do matter. They're unhappy with the finances involved to sell these three players here. I don't really care what you think, to be honest, board, if I'm honest with you. Like that's they were good, they were good deals. Believe me, they were good deals for the club. Look what we are, but we're good. Build a new stadium is in progress. I don't like this. Okay, I don't like that though. Uh, boom promotion to Serie A are looking good right now. So it's all looking pretty good from the board's perspective. Supporters are currently pleased with the playing style, defensively solid football. I mean, have they watched the games? The under 20s have had a pretty average start to their season with two matches. Well, it's only two matches played, one win out of two. So they're mid table. The under 18s have played two matches as well. And they're currently in the promotion places for their league. Like I said, youth isn't really that important to me in this save. I think the money's going to have to go into the first team quite a lot. But obviously, we want the youth team to do well when it can. Because we can't really turn down play good players coming through the the academy. It would be nice to have just one or two. Like, if we can get one player that comes through in the first team, it would be quite nice. But I don't really care about that too much. And I think by time we're in a position to win trophies, I don't think the academy would have caught up to that level that we're going to be at. But you never know. We'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. So yeah, just to illustrate just how good Muslija is, this... Uh, graphic here is going to show you it right now. So you're going to see how high non-penalty expected goals and high quality creating from open play. He is by far and away the best player in the league, the entire league. He's by far the best. That does pretty much stack up with what I've seen from him. He's really good. This is what I'm saying. Like we've won five from five. 
we've got a striker scoring goals left, right and centre that probably shouldn't have gone in. And we've got a creator who's by far the best, best player in the league. If we were to lose either one of these two for like long periods, especially both of them, which we could do now if, if uh, Florent was to get himself injured here, we're going to start to drop quite quickly. And that's where we're going to very much need the in-game management like I talked about, where I'm going to create like a Deserby game model. And we're going to deploy that as the, as the base tactic for us. But we are going to tweak game to game because that is exactly what him and his coaching staff and, and analysis staff, that is what they would do. They would make tweaks in game. They would change. And maybe instead of using the halfback, if the other team start only pressing with one and they're dropping everybody else back, maybe you don't need to have the the quote halfback going in to drop between the centre backs. Maybe you don't need that anymore. You know, there, there's so many different nuanced things that you can do. And in the game this year, with the positional rotations, you can be so much more creative with your tactics. So although we're going to have a game model, we are going to be open to tweaking it game to game because that's what I think that you would expect, especially during the game if things aren't working the way that you expect them to go. So we're going to definitely be looking to do a bit of that. As, as we go forwards here. But uh, yeah, looking pretty looking pretty good overall. In terms of the next opponent, we've got Brescia here. They play Narrow Diamond, so I'm not too worried about looking at them in any much more detail than that because I know what's going to happen. They're either going to have two rotating players. It's going to be the same as the game we looked at at the start of the season where it's going to be a 4-1-3-2, or one of them's going to go, and it's going to look a bit like a 4 triple two type system. So either one of those two systems are going to be how it's going to look. But we're pressing with two strikers and a, and a 10. So you're going to get pressed with two strikers and they've got a 10 man mark in your CDM. So if we play two centre-backs and one CDM against that, they can man for man that. But then they're going to leave my full backs completely open. So I would think in this game, this is where you might go and play from an in-possession perspective. You would look to play two full backs that are staying wide in the build-up and, and stay wide because they can't cover that. They can go man for man, and we'll just play wide past them every time. That's that's the plan that we're going to go with here, uh, which is pretty much how this is set up right now. This isn't how I deliberately did it, but yeah. So I think that I would like to use predominantly centre-backs that are good with the ball as my default type of player across the back line, all the way across. Maybe one wing back is fine. So you've got like you've got two centre-backs, a centre-back, then you've got my right-back, who's essentially the profile, physical profile of a, of a full-back. So we've already got that here. Then my left back is like an old school fullback, wing back type player. The problem is though, if you're going to play wing backs traditionally and I can keep them wide and they're going to be like a six foot three type centre back that's good on the ball, having them set as a wing back, you know, type role isn't great because they're going to stop running with the ball all the time, right? It's, it's not ideal. However, you can set your wing backs to dribble less. So if we do have, so now if we have a player at fullback that is the profile of a centre back and isn't the greatest at dribbling and, and being creative and crossing, we can now ask him to potentially dribble less as the wing back, right on wing back, even wing back attack. So positionally now, let's say I want him to really go and push out high and wide during the build up. So wing back attack, get yourself high and wide, take the center off, get yourself high and wide. But now I can ask him to not dribble more and he can now cut inside with the ball. Okay, here we go then. We're going to play our first game against Brescia here. We're going to let them go man to man on the pivot play and the two centre-backs. We're going to leave our two full-backs completely free and wide. I'm going to see how that goes early on against them. I'm thinking of when looking at the wing-backs for Brighton in the last couple of matches that I looked at anyway, I feel like that something like a wing-back with rubber position would be pretty good, especially for the left side and the right side. I'm still thinking maybe something like that holds the width early on, goes a bit narrower later on, and then also doesn't dribble too much. So fullback attack, maybe. We're going to go with that and see how that goes on this side. Uh, really, the duty that I'm looking at, the attack, is more for where they position themselves early on in the build-up and where they, sort of, where they position themselves is more what I'm looking for rather than what they do with the ball. I'm controlling what they do with the ball by PIs. So sit narrower, dribble less. That's where they're going to position themselves a bit and then what he does with the ball. So... I think that's the best way to go. Maybe his passing directness could go up so that he looks to like maybe play down the line if needed. I, I, basically, I just don't want him running with the ball up and down the pitch. I don't want that. So we need to avoid that if we can. But we'll try this. We'll go with this anyway. That is going to be your team. It's going to be Ernst in goal with uh, Zampano, Papetti, Nauman and Calasso across the back. I was told Calasso is the correct way to pronounce this. Afadli as a pivot player with Ellison and, and Muslija as the other two sort of central players. Christopher Ansu on the right hand side. Pirini on the left. Miguel Rodriguez is your nine. And we are going to get underway here. And we're going to look pretty closely at what the opposition do. We'll let the assistant take this one. He's going to say, 
Should everybody their recent praise is justified. Okay. Yeah, so now we're diving for them. We'll see how this lines up early on. Okay, I've gone to the full match, actually, for the first minute or so of the game. Uh, it's already got, gone past, like, to a minute into the game. That's why the, the, the uh, tactics thing's gone off there. Do you want to see how we sort of get on? Well, that was interesting. Let's just watch back this pattern of play again, right from the kickoff here. So it's gone to the right back, who is going to stay a bit further forwards in our fullback attack. So he gets the ball. We don't want him to dribble with it. So he's told not to dribble with it. So he takes a few touches, then releases it. Good, that's good. Played into the number 10. That's all right. I don't mind a bit of that. Kalasoe gets it. So in the current formation that we've got, the deep line playmaker there is quite advanced. But again, it is straight from kickoff, so we can't read too much into that early doors. Uh, but also at that point, we would want them to stand up anyway. We want them to get slightly further forwards at that point in the game once the uh, the players can play forwards here. We don't want to still be sapped in the centre backs, of course. So that looks okay. Kalasoe goes wide, gets his cross blocked. Wins it back, actually. But the second one, in far post, headed away. Okay. That's how it started off. Okay, let's watch this goal kick together. Let's see how we get on here. So, we're looking at our CDM. Does he split the centre-backs with his current system? With his current setup, sorry. So, deep playmaker make defend. Unfortunately, we go straight to the... I mean, that's where the gap is, though, I suppose. That's where they can leave the space, so that's fine. So, he doesn't need to split them. They're not really pressing us the way that Brighton had been pressed in the most recent matches of real life, and they've left the full-backs completely free. So, that's, that's where the weakness is. This is the weakness right here for them. This is why we don't need to rotate players in the middle, really, for this opposition formation. Because that's not really where the space is. Going please, he sort of stopped himself. They're getting a bit too close together here, the playmaker and the right back. So, like, does the right back need that? Maybe the right back doesn't need to sit narrower. Okay, maybe in those situations, we actually need the right back to overlap. So, I'm going to stick overlap on the, the two wing back. Just because in those situations, if, the, if we're playing two pivots, they're going to be in those potential half spaces for the recycle option. They don't need to be the recycle option in the inside position there. That can be taken by the pivots. Fullbacks need to then stay wider and be a recycle option either wide or they can actually overlap the player themselves if they choose to. That's what we'll try and switch to there. They're going to go long from this. They're not going to play their shorts, surely. I mean, where's the pressure, lads, by the way? What are we doing here? And they finally go long. We're going to win this all day, surely. We do. Moussage into Kalasoe, who's still up from really from the set piece and stuff, right? He's going to get it here. He's going to whip in a cross block, goes for a corner. Yeah, they're not the best team to really showcase our changes against. They're playing a narrow diamond and they're not really pressing us, which might be the case a lot, a lot of the time in Italy anyway, but the, it's the narrow diamond that sort of ruins it a bit because they're just making it so easy for us. Whether we score, you know, or not is a different question. But I mean, in terms of the play out and what we're looking at, they they ruin it by being terrible in the way that they're pressing us and the way they've set up against us. There's got to be a goal, surely. Oh, I thought it would be a slightly better pass. Christopher goes through, plays it surely into the box. Now does, but just, yes, there it is. There's one for Venezia and... If we just watch this again, the right back being high and wide really helped us here and not being in the back line. This needs to be in the back line against them. It does leave us 2v2 at the back. That is something that I'm very wary of. They've got two strikers just staying up. So there is a risk element to that. We probably don't want the two pivots going as much as they are. So um, in fact, why did that not come on there? We need to watch, uh, we need to watch replay of that. Yeah, so you, I mean, their strikers were back for this, actually, to be fair. It wasn't 2v2, but Kalasoe got on the ball. Again, full-back attack, this is where our change happens, right? This is where the gap is in their tactic. They're going to leave the gap here. That's fine. We're going to play it. He gets the overload of two versus one against their... Who is Fares? Is that their left-back? Sorry, I just want to check that one second before we continue on here. Is that the left-back? It is the left-back. So the left-back is 2v1. That's how you beat a narrow diamond, right? If you get, if you can get your full-backs forwards, you can create 2v1 overloads. It's also how you can beat like a 3-5-2 type formation, right? You get your wide overloads, you got your 2v1, they can't deal with it, doesn't know where to go to, and the goal comes from that scenario, and we get into the box there. Nice, good goal, boys. Really, really good stuff. 1-0. Nostalgia back into Kalasoe. Far post, cross to Pirini. Pirini's not going to get there, but Ellison's going to take a touch. He bangs it in there. Should have been a goal, really. Well, should have been a goal is harsh. I was expecting it to be a shot on target, but it took a deflection, so it's all good. But what do we get to... Not Musiala, and it goes up for a goal kick because that was terrible. You've not seen any examples yet of them pressing us and us having to play out with a single player. I'm resigned to the fact that I might have to use a halfback to get the exact behavior that I want in the play out, but then he won't attack the way that I want him to later on in the uh, in the in the play. So rock and a hard place a little bit there with that exact rotation. Oh, that was close. Okay, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try the halfback in the middle to see how it goes. I do think he's just gonna stay there too long, which is a problem. But we'll go with this for now. That'll be our setup going forwards for the next little bit here. Okay, let's watch full match. I'm not getting enough of the build-up that I'm like into a... I'm not getting enough of the build-up in the highlights. So let's just see how it works. And we've got the central three. We've got two players split. So you can see here how my room playmaker is here now with the halfback there. They sort of start up in a 4-3-3 almost there. 
then it transitions more into like a 4-2-1 shape. Now, you've got him splitting the strikers, but you see how he stayed there all the way. So he really expected to start pushing out at that point. So it's almost like having him as a Libra would work better because he would step out. He would start off splitting, then step out, but that obviously means he'll defend like a centre-back, which isn't what we want. So we're, we're a bit caught again with that, I guess, as he gets crossed into the box. Okay, so halfback's going to stay there. He's going to split them, which will be good in a second. Here it comes now. He's going to split them here. But, uh, I mean, that's okay. That's okay, but then now we need to push out, and he's not really going to do that for us, is he? No, he's going to stay there. So that's the problem. I don't think we really want that. So it needs to be that. So it has to be deep on playmaker defend. It has to be that in terms of the role that he's got. I mean, in the 4 2 3 1, he will drop and he'll be much more aggressive when he's the side centre back. So when you use a half back and he drops on the side of the back line in FM 24, he's going to push up slightly more aggressively on the sides. When the ball is on their side, the side centre back will play more like a wide centre back, right? That's how it's, it's going to work. So do we try him there and see how that looks? Let's try it. Let's try that and see how it looks. Throw in here. Throw it into the CDM. Plays it back into Kalasoe. And so he gets it. Chris Franz, he goes all the way through. Sort of loses control and it goes into the goalkeeper. That was close again, though. They're going to go long, I think, from this. And we're going to try and mop up the second ball if we can. Wow, that's going to be easy. Surely, lads. There it is. Easy. Chris Franz, he gets it. Just watching now our pivot player. So he's still making the back three. And we're still getting the shape of uh, the current Brighton team a lot when they play out. But you see how he's now... If you look where he is, if you match up our now halfback on the right-hand side to his pivot partner, they look a little more like they... I mean, I know he's wide. He's really wide, especially he's just been crossed. But they look more like they're going to be in the same sort of partnership than before. Before, he was definitely like a back three. And now you see straight away they squeeze together and defend like two pivots. So that looks more realistic to what we're looking for, to be honest. It looks a lot better. Oh, we're in it. Go on, Ellison. It's got to be. It's got to be. Oh, what a goal. It's actually come out as well from the Segundo Valance. What a goal from, uh, not Segundo Valance, from Playmaker. I think he is. Is he? I can't remember now. He's Segundo Valance. Okay, yeah. But that looked much better. That was good. That is 2 0 to Venezia. There we go. Done him twice, ready for our tactical changes. That was good. There's our little halfback coming back in as well, I think, there. I think, it, so it's 20, I think it's 26. I think it is him. Yeah, that looked a lot better, actually. That looked a lot more realistic to what I've seen from some of Brighton's shapes early on. So, happy with that. It's not perfect yet, but we are episode two into the recreation series. And to be fair, I expected to spend the whole season one just getting the philosophy right, forgetting the game model. So the fact we're making these strides already is pretty good, I guess. At 2-0, what I call this is like, not fake football, a fake result. Because it's 2-0, both teams are going to play slightly differently now because of the result and you don't really get the true pattern. So I'm going to switch it on to key highlights and we're going to just let it play out now for the rest of the game on key and we'll restart again on comprehensive in the next one. So we'll see how this game ends up. Free kick, far post, Kalasoe goes up, heads it towards goal, makes it 3 0 to Venezia. That is going to be game over. Two versus one at the back, though, wasn't liking that, but we scored 3 0. We'll say keep it going, lads. It's a highlight, and it is on key highlight, so this could be a highlight for somebody here. They touch the ball there, they're going to take some touches, they're going to go through. Uh, they play it back now. On the right hand side, they're going to cross it potentially here. Goes in across, Papetti gets rid of it. Long highlight here. They work it back into the middle. Are we going to win this? No, we're not. They're going to get overloaded against us here. They're going to cross into the box. It's going to be a highlight for them, you'd expect. Maybe it isn't now. This is just a chaos highlight, really. It's gone over. A, it's going to be over a minute, this entire highlight. A minute in game, of course. Pirini going to release it now. He does. He gives it away. It's another turnover. Okay. And this is going to be now surely a highlight for them. They've got three players in the same position here. I don't know what they're doing. They get it through. Oh, my Christ. They actually got that through. 3-1. Corner. But for us, played shorts. It's going to be worked back into the box here. Muslija goes through, takes touches, shoots on goal, scores 4-1 to Venezia, and we are on fire. Like They've created more XG than us, but they've had like two really, really good chances, which is really inflated. That way they broke through. One they missed, one they scored. That's why their XG is so high. But it's something to be slightly concerned about, I think. Because, yeah, that's going to, probably going to cost us, you'd expect, going into next season. You'd expect so, anyway. Look at the shape, then. Um... I think if he's going to play as a halfback, if that's how we're going to try and recreate this and make this work, then he needs to not be as aggressive, I think. It, I think that's the way it's going to have to be. So let's just change it to support duty for now. And let's see if that just stops him. Because I don't want that. Look at the gap between them. The diagonal gap between the two pivots is just way too big, in my opinion. So, yeah, let, let's try that. But uh, Miss Leisure comes through, gets on it. Pierini 
Pierini gets his cross blocked and there's nobody here now because the halfback is in the defensive line. The Segundo Volante is out of position and they are going to counter us. Who the fuck is this taking their time? Who's that? Miguel Rodriguez, the striker. What is he doing? Headed away. Second phase. They're going to get this and they, yep. Oh, goal, 4-2. And we changed the striker as well because I wasn't happy with that uh, effort defensively from him. And there's an instant highlight after that. It's just chaos for highlights right now. And uh, we... We can bring it down. We are. Christopher's going to get it again. He's got options with him. So let's just again look at the structure of the team. So the fullback's gone on the inside and the halfback's right behind him. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, well, I mean, if your winger can do that, then it doesn't really matter about the rest of the team. But uh, yeah, there's definitely things to work out on how we're going to do this. I think that there are many. I can see already there's about four or five different ways I think I could do a Zerbi recreation if you want to put that in quotes. And they would all look slightly different in the in the roles because the, how the roles react to each other is how is the essence of how things look so different right now, right? That's that's what's making the difference is just how different the role changes are affecting how the other players play and look, right? That's that's a huge thing that we're seeing right now, which is a good thing, I suppose. But it's it's difficult. I mean, playing two deep line playmakers might help us because the thing that I'm doing here is one player is always going in with Brighton. It could be either. Normally, there is one, but it could be either. Uh, but like, okay, so look at this. So there you've got, you've got two pivot players there, which looks pretty good. I like that. They were looking to get on the ball early on. Um, don't like the gap between the players really there, but that's fine. We get it through to Miliano. He's going to try and play somebody through, is he? No, he's going to lose it. Go on, sir. Just look at the pivots. Ellison and Lella. Okay, so there's your two pivots. Now, that looks pretty good. To me, that looks good. Especially if the fullback's gone, which he has. He's going to get on the ball right now. That looks good to me. That's a good structure. Really good structure. So maybe we can make this work with the halfback, but he can't really afford to rotate in. And if he can't rotate in, either he needs to go and play as a proper 10 in the center and be a, cent be a 10 for either side, or he needs to start coming in and we can overlap him out here. But uh, or, you could just say that for the Matoma role, you leave him on this and you just say that space is being vacated so he can just, you know, run into that gap that we've left for him. So I'd be thinking something like DM support, but with get forward so that he doesn't force the rotation, but he's still going to be more like your your Pascal Gross maybe type thing. I don't know. Somebody like that in there. Just looking at, just analyzing that there. I mean, we're doing this all 5-2 up against a team that are playing a narrow diamond, just ruining everything. So there is that to factor in too. Corner, edge of the area, play back to the taker. I mean, he's on side as well. This is going to be a highlight, I think. And there you are. It's another corner goal again. So tally those up. That's another one. 5-3. Okay, so I'm going to go to my defensive tactics. My defensive tactic is pretty much the 4-3-3 three, three version of our tactic. But I have the inside forward on support. Time wasting goes up. Counter attack comes off. That's how I like to set up the game. Normally with the, the actual previous roles, the ones that we use at the very start of the series, that's why we'd use my defensive tactic. But we'll leave it like that. That should be okay still. I think we're going to set up the game okay now. He's going to hopefully throw it. I mean, he's time wasting, but doesn't want to get booked for it. Played into the box to Emiliano. Back to the pivot player. Back to Emiliano. Takes some touches. Plays a great ball through to Pirini. Goes through. Shoots and scores. Lovely little finesse finish to the far post. Those of you that play FIFA will recognize that kind of finish. And that is going to be 6-3. And that is going to be a game over. I mean, yeah, this scoreline is a joke for Italian football, isn't it? There'll be people in the streets of Italy cursing at this match for being a disgrace. That is, is a disgrace, isn't it? Let's be honest. It's chaos. Chances everywhere. Goals everywhere. Nobody wants to see this. This isn't fun. Collect it, goalkeeper. There we go. Good. Yeah, definitely a lot of room to improve, I would say, based on that game. But it's a win. It's it's good when you're making tweaks to improve t a tactic and you're still winning and you're, you're striving for improvements based on the fact you've still won the game. So that is a huge positive for us. Right. That will do that. I will see you in four days for the second game. We're going to do three games today. We're going to be doing Brescia, uh, Tanana and, and Como are second. So that is going to be a big game to finish off today's episode. So I'll see you in four days for the game against Tanana, and let's see how we get on with some of those tweaks being put into action. And welcome back. So four days later, Calasso is... I keep saying Calasso, it's Calasso. Calasso is injured, but he's going to play anyway because I'm not interested in hearing his complaints. It's not his complaints, is it? It's, it's all fine. So in terms of the tactic then, what are we going to tweak to? So we've seen it in action a bit. What I'm going to try is use him as a halfback because he'll still push up on the right centre-back side, right? He'll still push up, which is the important thing. It doesn't matter what side he goes, but the way I've got this tactic set up, he's going to go on the right, I think. The Pascal Gross sort of role against uh, Liverpool, where he kept dropping in. I reckon we do that. It's a shame that he's not going to drop inside the centre-backs. 
but I, I just want to see if we can get this working first. I think everything else worked pretty good. We'll do double overlap. What I'm going to do is because he and he create a massive, oh shit, yeah, like, like that. Like they, they end up in a massive uh, gap like that. What I'm thinking we do is make him an inverted wing back, right? But what we ask him to do is to overlap. And he's still going to go into DM, right? He is still going to go into DM. I don't know how far he's going to go in. Let's, let's test it. That's what we're here to do. We're here to test things. So what happened here is you have... He will stay wide in the initial build-up, which is what we want. He'll then tuck in a bit narrow, but hopefully with overlap on and with this player trying to sit narrow and run inside with the ball, he'll see that the space is wide and he'll overlap and we'll try and create that sort of solid march um, left-back type behavior with him in there. That's the idea. He's also right-footed, though, this guy. So it's more like Lamptey, I guess, playing left-back for Brighton than it is Solly Marge. So let's try that and see how it goes and see how we think that's going to work. But, uh, yeah, looking okay so far. Little tweaks. Defensively was was a disgrace. I mean, I think the attacking mentality doesn't help with that, but they also played a narrow diamond, of course. We'll see what this team deploy against us. I didn't even check what they played before, to be fair. Let's have a look. Okay, so another formation that's not going to help us very much. Three three at the back, two strikers. So again, against this system, to be fair, what I'm going to start off with what I've done because I've already talked about it. But what I might tweak to, I can see immediately, is the 4-3-3 three, three with the halfback in the middle to split these two strikers. So we play out evenly with the three against their two, then two wing backs that should be completely free. These two have got to decide if they're going to mark then our, our full backs or our wingers. And we should create an overload there quite nicely. So let's see how we get on here. Right, it's on, a bit of a kick clash here. It's on comprehensive, but um, it was on key when I started the game. And it's already given us a highlight. This could be a goal instantly for somebody. It's going to at least be a chance, I'd have thought. Uh, we are this team, by the way. I know it's a bit of a kick clash here, but we are this team right here in the uh, the white the white shorts and socks. That is us. Uh, so they, they're going to score, aren't they? They've gone straight in behind. And there's one. Well, the in-possession tactics didn't affect that. But uh, defensively, we've been caught there. Let's just watch that again. So they got, they've got a left central player on an attacking duty. who's ended up in the same area as the striker. Poor back's not really gone across. I mean, where's my right CDM? He's there, isn't he? I mean, we could put that down to being caught on the set piece from a, from a kickoff. It's not great, though, is it? So one thing to watch out for is how far in does he go? But when we get, when we actually get the ball and play more than two passes, that that's what we need to watch out for. Apparently, we can't do that. Look, they're a discreet. Look at the state of their football. Come on, here we go. Bring this down. Let's play. Right. So it's good that he's narrow when the ball's on the opposite side. That's exactly what even Solid March would do that for Brighton. Uh, he's okay when the ball's that side. I don't care. It's when the ball's played on the left and it's played out from the left hand side. It's how narrow he goes. Then that's what I'm really concerned about. And they're going to do us again, aren't they? Here, we should be able to win that centre back. Go in that. Good lads. Doesn't get to the second one though. Uh, Ellison doesn't quite get there. They're going to get a 1v1 here. They play in the middle. Good. Pierini. Good uh, counter pressing from the boys. Or pressing even. Zampano goes. Okay, so I like that. He started off wide. Now he's gone a bit central. So he's now inside the centre back. Now, I don't think we really want that too much. But he's. I mean, from a tactical perspective, it works really well. But from a recreation standpoint, I'm not too sure. That's not good. He's offside. Yeah, he's going to be too narrow, isn't he? Yeah, Zampano's a bit too narrow, I think, with the inverted wing back. Uh, Roll. I think he's onside this guy. Again, he's going to go through. Oh, they should have scored again. Yeah, we're getting done on the counter here. Um, I don't like him there. Let's go to what I said. Let's go to what I said. So it's going to be a half back, And then we want to play round there too. So we're going to go with we're going to go with exactly the same thing, I think, in that essence there. I mean, you could play it like this, right? No, 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 no. I could do that. I mean, you could do that. That gets him dropping in the middle. It plays with two pivots. I, I, the thing is, whenever I do this in FM, I always feel like that the AI work out, here's the gap right here. And that is where they scored from anyway, the opposition. So I don't know if that's really the best idea. Okay, here we go then. Going to play out from the free kick. Papetti, play it in here quickly. What are you waiting for? Just play the... What is that? Just play it here, mate. He's right there. Really easy. Calasso goes wide, plays it into Christopher Antwi, who's got so uh, himself 1v1, actually. He's going to go wide. Don't cross that. All right, he cuts back good. That'll do. Release it to somebody else, please. I mean, he plays it to the one player that looked like he might have been offside, but he wasn't. That's okay. Then Calasso gets it. going to be a corner. But let's just go back and just briefly look again at the structure of the team as that was playing out. So you got Papetti, Alfadi's then stay. The problem is that, though, is that he's going to stay there. That's the problem, right? Maybe that. We could try that. Okay, they're going to play the board across their back line. I've switched it down to extended to sort of just get us into a few highlights where things are actually going to happen to see how things are sort of playing out. 
Uh, they've got that little overload there, haven't they? They love doing this, which is going to catch us out again, potentially. Keep... <gasps> Keeper, what are you doing, lads, at the back? Oh, they've done us twice on that. So what they're doing is they've got their left central field player, which I'll show you right now. He's got he's gonna be on a rotated Raw, I know he is. If we go back and just look at the uh the tablet here. Okay, so it says CM. He's almost certainly a CM attack. So he's forcing rotation. They both are. So they're, well, they're not forcing rotation, but they are both going up. So he's he's really playing as an AMCL. He's getting in loads and loads of space, which is uh which he was before anyway, when I had somebody there. So it's interesting that's where they're getting their their joy. Um, against us. They're getting a lot of joy, actually, in fact, against us there. So, I mean, ways to combat that. We could drop him back in here. That could be an option. It could be something a bit like, a uh, bit more like that. I'm going to go with this. I think we'll play We'll play proper two players together. I think we'll play maker defend with a Roman playmaker support. I'm going to change him to something else. I'm thinking maybe, maybe drop the positive mentality. I feel like he needs to be more of a defensive uh, type player for us because we're getting destroyed there by the way Miss Leisure to Miguel Rodriguez again goes from the short corner cuts inside he's going to get a shot away no Papetti gets it the centre back Papetti shoots and he scores and it's 2-1 yeah I'm going to say I want to see something much better in the second half uh, we seem to have controlled them better with this haven't created too many goals or chances to open play if we're going to do that though I'm going to put him on winger and cut inside the ball, I think. We'll try that on the left-hand side. Try and mix up a little bit. Instant highlight. Here we go. Calasso gets it. Come on then, lads. Here we go. A bit of tempo, please. Calasso gets it. Drives and drives and drives. And then loses the ball. He's doing the one thing I didn't want him to do, which is just dribble at players. So, although it says he's actually got the trait for it, hasn't he? Oh, likes to be opponent rapidly. Okay, so that's what he's got as a trait. So that isn't going to help us. So, Calasso, you're not the right profile of player to play in this role for us, at least in this match. Um... I switch them. Yeah, you could do on the left side. I don't care about the left side as much, but on the right side, I don't want you to do that. Because they clear it long. We get with now Pirini to Zampano on the left-hand side. Uh, he's going to travel with the left-hand side. Keeps going. Is he going to cross this? He does. Not the best decision, maybe. But we're going to get it back, though. Uh, Miss Leisure's going to go wide right. Is he going to cross it? A bit cross-heavy, this is. But Pirini's down that far post. Heads it towards goal. Is it just wide? Free kick, Rodriguez, far post. Nauman heads it towards goal, and it's gone in somehow. I don't know how this has gone in, but it has, and it's 2-2. We've come back pretty well in this game. I'm sure a lot of you watching thought we were going to get just turned over. I'm sure a lot of you watching thought we were just going to get turned over in this game when it went to 2-0, but uh, yeah, we've come back really well. Uh, the kick clash is uh, a bit frustrating, I guess, for the boys. That is some awful goalkeeping. It is 2-2. Okay, what I'm going to do now is... I'm going to go with double deep line playmakers here. So we're going to have two pivot players that don't force a rotation, which is what's going to happen. So he's now going to have a lot of space to drive into in here. And then what we're going to do with that is those two central field players, they've got roaming around and breaking through. And now we're going to be, should be covered most times with these two because they're not going to be breaking too far forwards in possession. So we've got like a box here, two center backs, for the two strikers, two CDMs for their two central field players. And the wingbacks then are going to try and push on a bit more. Maybe we can make one of them an attack duty to like push up on this side because yeah I think maybe that although he's defend that side isn't it? maybe it's the other way around that we go go with a bit of that in fact no let's leave them both on support let's leave them both on support let's try that because a late highlight here this could go either way we win the first header we win the second header we win the third ball although we did lose it initially Joel has it runs away loses it but Pirini's going to pick this up Miliano into Joel, to Conte, is he onside, is he on? he scored, is he onside is the question, it's going to be really close, I, I think he's just on, because of the left back playing him onside, but we'll see, I wasn't fully looking at it, so I can't say for sure, oh he's just off, and there you have it, finishes 2-2, two, two. I mean it felt like a lot of in-game management to try and get that back to 2-2 two, two in the end, I mean not too often a team's going to have two strikers and then two rotating C. Uh, cams like at the same time which is what effectively they had they are two strikers and two cams not too many systems are going to have both of those you know they're gonna have two strikers and one cam or one striker and two cams obviously the the narrow diamond and three five two are quite different maybe in italy we're going to get that a lot more though right with narrow diamonds and the three at the backs but uh yeah anyway that is that game done i'll see you in four days for the game against como and we'll have a few thoughts about what we're going to try in this one okay some good news to bring to you we have got christopher and we Adeji, he is going to be in the team of the week. Sorry, uh, sorry, B team of the week, he is going to be in. And he also got the AIC Player of the Month award, which is fantastic. Fair play to him. Four appearances, three goals, three assists, 8.10 average rating. So really good stuff from, 
from him. The strikers still cannot score unless their name is Morgan. So there's still that. We're still scoring a lot of goals as a team, though, which is okay. But yeah, the strikers aren't doing the business themselves. So going into this game, then, let's have a look at what Como actually plays. The formation of a flat 4 4 2. Okay. So I'm okay with that. They're going to deploy a flat 4 4 2 against us. I'm okay with that. So flat 4 4 2. Yeah, I'm still not convinced on any of the things that we've done so far in terms of how the players um, like play out and stuff. So. It's frustrating for me because I think for the player to drop in between the centre backs, it has to be a single pivot system. And or they do look like a double pivot, though, these two at times in this system. So it's okay. It's okay. It works. And I think having him offset to the right does help the balance of the formation. Kalaso has got multiple traits that don't allow him to play the way that I want him to. I mean, likes to beat opposition repeatedly, but has dribbling of 10. Yeah. And agility of. Why it was worse than that, wasn't it, before? So I don't know what to do with him, really. I guess we should switch these because I think that the right-hand side player, I want to be slightly more controlled because he's going to have a winger to play to and a number 10, potentially, immediately. That's what his, his options are. So I think that's what we want to do there. The left winger, I'm happy to change him to a winger. We can try and change this to a winger that uh, cuts inside with the ball. And then once, he's, once he starts cutting inside with the ball, hopefully that's where we get a bit of the overlap going, right? So maybe we should go overlap left. But not overlap right to try and encourage that behavior from the wing back here. He can go and go on his overlaps there. That looks pretty good to me. We'll give this a go in this game against uh, against Como, who are the second best team in the league, incidentally. And that was our first draw of the season. Como, okay, oh, they're fifth now, but they're still a decent side. But we'll go with this same team, same exact team yet again, apart from the fact that Carlos Soe now is being deployed at left back instead of right back. And we'll see how that goes. Assistant manager says we're doing well on a good run, so let's keep it going. I agree with that. Let's get into the game then. We're at home. Our four. 2-3-1 slash 4-3-3. However you want to look at it. It's going to play against Como's flat 4-4-2. Okay. And uh, yeah, let's see how they match up with their 4-4-2. So they're making runs in behind. Okay. That's fine. Are we going to concede from kickoff again? We might do. No, that's offside. No danger. No threat. Yeah, uncomprehensive. I'm not seeing enough of the game. So I haven't seen a single highlight in 10 minutes. So we're going to just scroll back here. I want to see how we play out. There we go. Goal kick. So what's nice, you can see there my playmaker. If he was getting pressed, I think he would drop between the center backs here if, if we needed to, but he doesn't need to go in. So that's fine. Tenmark's going to run out. That's okay. Releases it. And uh, yeah, I like I like this. I think this looks very Brighton-esque right now. I think he's gone a little high early. Ellison has. But um, I don't know how this looked a second ago. Right? I think we were just attacking and they played it back and we've gone back forwards again. That's why he started off a bit higher. This isn't from a goal kick, of course, right? Just looking at this again. Watch how they try and counter us here. They've got an overload on the left-hand side there. So we get it back. Yeah, he's already going to rotate high at this point because the ball's so high. So, is that too high? I think potentially for the left central field player. I think it's a bit too high too early. Yeah, because he is... Okay, but see, now that's it though, right? Is now you freeze it there. He's dropped to get on the ball. Because he's a roaming playmaker, he's going to go and seek to get on the ball. So now, if I was to I say to you, here's a screenshot, what formation is that in FM? You're going to say to me, four, two, three, one. Back four, two pivots, uh, you're three and you're one. So that is how we've managed to get. That's why I was saying to you that I can get a 4 3 one shape from the shape that I'm currently using, which doesn't look like an orthodox 4 3 one right? Everybody would associate 4 3 one with that. But we're able to get that shape like that. It's just in possession. And even so, right, if you play the 4 3 one and you just go to Volante, he's going to go, it's going to go like that anyway. If you use something like this, they're going to end up in that shape anyway, right? So it doesn't really matter what it says on the tactic screen. It's how does it look in the game? That's how we always do recreations here on the channel. And that was a really, really poor pass, whoever that was. Okay, we just regained the ball. Let's see how we play out here. So again, it looks like we've got two pivots there. That looks good to me right now. And he still hasn't gone yet. He does go later because he's a playmaker now, not a second of Um We've got the ball wide. Tries to get the ball into Rodriguez, gets it back to the pivot player. Okay, this is looking good to me. I'm still not sure about whether they should go so narrow, these fullbacks. Because how I'm how they're actually doing it isn't good. This is good. That's what you want. If you're going to have somebody just on the half space there, he's just on the outside of the defensive line. So between their uh, winger and their fullback and outside it, we've got them pinned in here on the left-hand side. That's a good 2v2 for us. We can get the ball over there, and which we're not going to. That's okay. But then we now we've got two versus one because he's occupied in here. We're not going to apply it, though. We're going to go back to Calasso. Okay. Calasso, left-hand side to Peony. Good 1v1 now. Plays into Ellison. Half space cross, far post, keep it collective. That looks pretty good. Ellison into Musleisha. Musleisha on the counter. Plays it into the right wing. Just look at the far side of the pitch, just seeing how they sort of line up, really. That was a terrible pass. 
In fact, what I should have looked at as well is as he's running away, what are the players beside him doing? The right back is wide. Pivot player is here. Pivot player, as a deep playmaker, isn't too bothered about going in. It's these who just can't go into the same position. Right? I don't wonder if they're both close to the same lines. That could happen at some points. It's not ideal, but it's fine. As, as long as then one of them is either supporting a lot closer here or a lot closer in here. But to have them both there isn't ideal. And that's why we gave away the ball, because neither of them were really good options for that. And we're getting countered anyway on the uh, character there. But we win the cycle. Good. Adeji is going to go into the middle of the pitch. Yeah. See... I just think that's where you want your... It's hard, right? You want 12 players in the pitch sometimes. We want then our number 10 to be... Well, our second number 10. If we cast him as our first number 10, our second one to sort of like approach in here a bit quicker. But I mean, peel your run, man, Miguel. Miguel, peel your run. Peel your run out here and then we can get the ball into your feet and you can go away on goal. But he stays central, makes a bad run, bad pass. Maybe better players execute those attacks slightly better we don't know don't put that out he's well away from the ball don't you dare put that out Christopher he's got a score oh keeper saves it headed towards goal over the bar so free kick for them they're going to play it into the box I'm pretty sure that first goal was offside but it doesn't matter counter attack should be on here we've got players running through how's this going to play out I have a feeling they're going to ruin this somehow must lead you oh he's taking a bad touch but we've still got it deep playmaker into the right back must lead you into the striker turns on it turns on it gets his shot away keeper saves they're going to go long. They do. If we win this, oh, he's quite pinned on side. Miguel Rodriguez. It's Pini. He's got a score. He's got a score. He's got a score. He does. And there's one else for Nezia. We'll take that. That is one. Not from great play from us in possession, but we've scored and it's 1 0. Calasso throws into Pini. Pini into Papetti. Took such plays it back to Calasso. Calasso on the left hand side. Plays a great pass into Pini. Winger attack with cut inside. Plays it into our room playmaker. Far side to the winger. Doesn't quite get there. Zampano's going to get to this. Plays it into uh, Christopher on the right-hand side. Zampano. Patient bullet play. This is good. Now I'm going to play it back inside if you can. Good. That's a great pass into the number 10. Gets tackled. Stays on the ball. Attack stays alive. Zampano. Musleisure. Goes through. We'll get a shot away. Surely does. There is 2-0 to Venezia and we'll take that. So another highlight straight afterwards. I've gone to key highlights, by the way, for the last uh, five minutes or something that came. And uh, just highlights left, right and centre. It's going to be a chance straight away. You'd think for somebody. Could be for them. I don't think we deserve to be tuning up really in this game. And there you go. It's now 2-1. Miguel Rodriguez. Calasso. Calasso takes it. Travels with it. Releases it, hopefully. Don't you dare keep dribbling with it. Calasso. I mean, you've drawn a foul. But in reality, that isn't what I want you to do. But I guess he is who he is. He's got so many traits as Calasso. And it's going to be a penalty, I'd expect. Yeah, there it is. Penalty. Who's going to take it? Is it going to be a striker? Pini's going to take it. Left winger. Miguel Rodriguez needs a goal, really. He probably should have gone to him. Pini's going to take it. He's going to score. It's 3-0. Okay, we'll say... Keep going. Corner for the opposition. You know what time it is. It's going to be a goal for the opposition. We need to do something about this because we're lucky we're so good going forward that this hasn't cost us. It's definitely going to cost us eventually. Uh, there it is. Cross the far post. Good. Lovely little half space cross that. That was good. 3-1. Going to take off Calasso. Put on Candela. Going to take off the CDM, the pivot player. Put on... Um, it does probably and the last change we'll make is the striker we'll put Joel on again up front instant highlight after our changes so this could be an interesting sequence of events here they're going to have a throw in deep in their own third they throw it on the line we win it it says plays it across to Miliano stays on it stays on it travels with it is he going to shoot from distance he's got a chance to shoot now he does he scores it's 4-1 to Venezia what a finish that was from Miliano and that is 4-1 potential counter attack here for Como they play it into the middle they play it across the right-hand side. They're going to get to this. So we're going to get to that. We do. Candela gets to it first. Plays it inside to Musleisure. Beats, uh, almost beats the man, actually. Doesn't quite get there. They're going to counter us now, potentially. They've got a bit of time, too. They release it. I mean, that's a good attempt at a foul. Love that. Pini gets it. Miliano. Now, the left-hand side, Pini gets it. Plays it into Candela. Left back. He's going to cut inside with it. Plays it to Miliano. That's a great little ball. And that's going to stay for one, though. Late corner. Here it comes. Here it comes. Whipped in, goal, 4-2. Okay, then last highlight of the game. Been, it's been a really good performance, I think, from us generally in possession. We've done really well. We've solved the problems that we had really well. Corners are an issue still. Um, yeah, the, the exact combination for the double pivot is not settled on just yet at all by any stretch. We still need to make loads more improvements, I think, uh, to exactly which one we want. But we did a lot of good testing, I would say, in this episode. We figured out that... The halfback in the middle, just he just stays there, so we don't want him to do that. 
that isn't going to work for us and what we're asking, asking the player to do. Um, Dilo Planemaker defend does a good enough job, but he doesn't really drop in if he doesn't need to. So I guess that's a good thing. We'll have to wait until it plays out. I do feel like they do make a double pivot pretty good when they're actually set like this. Obviously, you can do it this way around with an actual double pivot, but you don't get him dropping in the middle of the two, right? That is the one thing that you miss when you do when you do this sort of uh, type of system. So it depends what you want from it. I think that I want my players to have the ability to drop in when needed to do that, but it's something that we can look at and tweak with the player roles and stuff like that, right? Like I said, long term, once we've nailed down like a proper recreation, what I would likely do anyway is in games change and change ahead of games to say, see how we can we can beat teams. I mean, that's pretty much what we've done there so far in, in the middle of matches. We've had to sort of tweak things to get out, which is good. Lots of goals conceded. I'm really concerned about the defensive record, but a lot of these goals are from corners and set pieces, but not all of them. So, something to look out for. And that's even with dropping it to positive, right, for that game or two. So, yeah, I don't know. Really positive because we won the matches, two of the three matches, drew the other one. We're still top of the league. And we're still striving to improve things, right? Which I think is a really good thing for us uh, as a team and within a tactic. So we'll keep striving to improve, keep trying to change this uh, this up as much as we can. But I'm I'm not I'm not as happy as I'd like to be with my current pivot setup. I do like this setup; it works quite well. I would like this one to work if in an ideal scenario. I do think you can go with the box here. You can go with two centre backs and two pivots that don't rotate, and then have two attacking wing backs. We could go with something like that, um, and then have like. The more attacking pivot player be like a DM support with get forward whenever possible and that kind of stuff, right? Try and make them a bit more aggressive, but they're not going to go and force a rotation. So we could look to do something like that as well. But lots of good stuff there. Lots and lots of different ways of doing it, which is good. Generally, I think this philosophy is pretty good. The only thing we've changed so far is the mentality and whether to put overlaps on or not. That's the only thing we've tweaked so far. It feels like to me, the first attempt at the actual philosophy was a pretty good start. It's only been little tweaks to that to try and make that as good as possible. I think we've pretty much nailed it. I think that is pretty much the mentality. With changing mentality, you can look at maybe the width a tiny bit in the tempo, but generally I think we're pretty much there. It's really the game model looking at specifics with the, the pivot players and the wing backs. Although today I did say we we're going to look at the, the pivot players, we did really start to touch upon the full backs as well, of course. We sort of did a bit of both there and looked at looked at both of them in, in, today's, in today's episode. I still think that we're, we're not really recreating the wing backs how I would like them either. But yeah, I'll go. I'm going to keep going through more matches to see in different matches where maybe the the pivot dropping in isn't quite as prevalent. And then looking to build a game model around when they don't do that. Maybe we could look at that as well. But in the most recent games that I've seen of them against both United and Liverpool, there was definitely a common theme of a pivot dropping between the centre backs, right? At times. So. They at least need to be able to have the opportunity to do that, I still think, right now. So I still think that's the best way to go in some form. So I think the deep line playmaker playing as the pivot in the middle is the best way to go. How we do the fullbacks is still a bit undecided for me in how exactly we go about that. We could play... Like the Brighton right back in one of the matches that I looked at, it was a centre-back playing right back, and he, but he was quite high at the start and then looked like he was a bit like a wing back, but he wasn't dribbling with the ball. So... Playing an inverted fullback, they will stay wide in the build-up. But then as the play goes on, as long as there's three centre-backs, what they will then tend to do is while that's happening is they'll play like a wide centre-back. So they'll still be there and be wide. They're just not going to be super wide and overlapping too much and stuff, but they st will still be there. I think we can try that. I still think that that is a potential... I still think that's a potential role to use in part of the recreation for the right-sided player. When he uses a right-back that is basically a centre-back and they do go wide, I do think that if you actually look at the match engine and how the inverted full-back actually plays, as long as you're pinning the team back on a regular basis, they will still be quite aggressive and they will still at times be, be wide and be able to overlap on rare occasions. They're not going to try to do that all the time, but they will be in that wide area because of how the back three sort of plays when you use this role. So I do think there's a case for that being an inverted full-back on this side. I don't think as much I can make a case for the other side being an inverted wing back. I feel like they go into the middle way too much. I feel like that the Zerbi's pivots really control the pivot areas. And yes, the opposite fullback goes narrow, but they go narrow quite late. But they but they don't go narrow like Jao Cancelo with with Rodri, like in making a, a three two. It's a bit different to that. It's more like a natural fullback that goes narrower later. And the inverted wing back and how it's used in FM is really the Jao Cancelo type one. So I think what we could try to do 
is something like a complete wing back that has run from position, or we can look at something like a wing back that has sit narrower. That's potentially something that we could do. Um, those are my thoughts really going forward to the wing backs. But I think we're really close. I think we've pretty much, at least for the next bit of the season, we're settled on having no Libra at centre back. We need two central defenders. Don't really care what the role is. It doesn't really matter at this point. A deep line playmaker defending the middle, so we can do this drop thing. Making sure this player is a ribbon playmaker, so they do drop and make a double pivot at a time, so that covers that. These guys are all fine. This could change from inside forward or winger. It doesn't really matter. And the most crucial thing then really is what we're still looking at is the fullback. So I might try off camera a bit of this, having those three like that, and then having this player as something like that, or alternatively, maybe like a wingback support with sit narrower, something like that. Maybe that's the option that we go for. That's where we're sort of getting to, I think, a little bit with how with how it's going to work. But hopefully that makes a bit of sense to everybody. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense to everybody. And hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode. I would have dropped a little bit of the uh, the Brighton analysis in the early part of the video. Hopefully that was a... Uh, hopefully people enjoyed a bit of that going in there as well. I'll try and keep a bit of that going forwards in future videos. I can't do video. I can't do picture in picture video because I could get a copyright strike for that. But pictures are fine. So I can do still pictures... Uh, which I don't like to do still pictures for analysis because you can tell the picture, you can tell any picture that you want to tell from a still picture. You can tell the complete opposite to what's happened by just taking a picture at the right time, right? I don't like using pictures for analysis. I don't like it at all. I hate it on, on Twitter a lot of the time. So video is always the way to go so you can see what happened before the event, during the event and after the event, right? That's always really important to me. But sometimes that's what you can do. So so I'll have to use images for the, for the foreseeable, but uh, hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Next episode then i'll oh, just to recap i don't know if we recap we're top of the league we're top of the league by four points by the way four points of second place and of third we've got 29 goals scored 11 against a lot of goals scored and conceded from set pieces which isn't great for us it's a bit chaotic but generally it's okay next episode i think that there's uh there's only three games left in this month there's only three in november so i'm thinking we come back in december i think i give myself those three matches now off camera so yeah i think we'll come back for these three matches in december we'll come back for citadella Cremonese and Ascoli come back for those three, see how the games have gone off camera, play those three, and that sets us up nicely going into the January transfer window, which, to be honest with you, may have zero activity because our squad, I think, is pretty much set. We don't have a lot of money and we don't have too many assets to sell. So I don't think the January transfer window in this first season is going to be too much of an event for us. It's going to be still looking at this tactic and, and looking at the roles and stuff. If I find this combination worked really well, for the next episode, I'll make sure I have some clips at the start of the episode where you can see it in action before we even get into the matches ourselves. So you can see how it's been working off camera and we'll recap all that, all that good stuff. What I'll likely do is the next one, we'll do a bit of that and do these three matches. Then the episode after, whenever that is, we'll do like a mid-season review and we'll try and check the, the league tables and stuff midway through the season. So maybe we look at doing those three matches there or something like that but that's gonna do it thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the series i really appreciate all of your support and comments on the first video it really helps support the channel when you do like and comment on the videos i really do appreciate that and of course subscribing too i really appreciate all that all that stuff but uh, thank you very much for watching once we've recreated the playing philosophy and we've recreated the game model and we have in essence an fm tactic recreation of Roberto De Zerbi, I will then release that tactic to be downloaded. Firstly, it'll be available on my Discord, then I'll put it on Twitter so everybody can download it. But that will become available. There will be a downloadable tactic for this series when once I feel like that's being complete and what it will likely be, and what it will likely be is two different formations in the game of the same tactics. There'll be like a 4-2-3-1 tactic where they play like that out of possession and they build with two actual pivots. Then there'll be one where it's like a single CDM in the middle to try and recreate that dropping in between the centre-backs behaviour. So yeah, we'll have the two options for you so you can pick and choose whichever one you'd like. Or like me, you might find that uh, the, the philosophy is great and the game model is great, but you might need to tweak it game to game anyway. So having two tactics there right off the bat is a good blueprint and place to start. That is going to do us. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you're enjoying the series. And I'll see you all, of course, next time.